So welcome back. The engine in, uh, I turned my attention to getting the carbies sorted out and uh, I've fabbed up these nice intake runners using the original intake runner but obviously cutting and twisting and then adding extra tubes. Um, using the original ones was a bit of a pain because they're chrome so I had to remove the chrome before I could weld them but uh, obviously they meet up with the head really nicely uh, so it was a good place to start. Uh, super happy with how they came up uh, and I was going to go through um, making a nice throttle linkage system for them but as I was switching the welder off after welding the last runner this happened. All these new rule changes, uh, a lot of the plans we had for things going on at the back of the car are a little bit up in the air. Uh, we've got the possibility of running a six speed box now instead of the five speed box. Uh, obviously now air fire, so I've got to work out what throttle bodies to run. There's obviously a possibility of still using those intake runners. There's plenty of throttle body arrangements that uh, adapt to Weber DCOE stud patterns, so we might still be able to use the runners. Uh, no distributor required anymore. Um, so yeah, a lot of stuff going on at the back that I'm not sure about now. So um, I thought I might turn my attention to the front of the car and uh, tick a few jobs off up this end. So the two jobs I want to get stuck into at this end of the car is to uh, fit a decent aluminium radiator and also try and get this 16 inch by, what is it, 205, 55 tyre to actually fit under the, uh, the front of the car. I think some fiberglass and metal is going to have to come out. Uh, but first, a bit of a tidy up. So, first job. Get rid of this uh, bracket for the brake booster. Not planning on running a booster. Uh, planning on running a floor mounted pedal box. Uh, of course, you know, tomorrow the rules will change and we'll require a booster, so the next video will be me welding this back in. Uh, to make that job harder, I'm going to have to remove the bracket in pieces so I can actually get the grinder in. So I think I'll cut these two wings off so I can get the grinder in across here and down there. Uh, hopefully not do any damage to the surrounding chassis. Time to make some noise. So that came out relatively easily, which is good. Next job is to cut out this section of fiberglass so that I can get to the chassis rail. Seems a bit of a shame to start hacking into the fiberglass, but someone's already had a crack at it here to get uh, the clutch master cylinder to, this, um, to the pedal. Uh, and haven't, haven't done a particularly neat job. And need to do something about this area anyway. So cut this out and then laid it Later on we can look at fiberglassing this all up and hopefully get this side to match that side a bit better. So uh, I've got the little dribble tool, the little cutter, and now it's time to uh, fill my nice clean workshop with fiberglass dust. Yay! So I was about to throw on the towel, didn't think it was going to happen. Had to drop the wheel down 35mm to get the, the, the bonnet to close. Um, and it was just too much to chop out of this very structural section. 35mm deep out of 50 and bring it back 48mm out of 100. So a big section to chop out. Uh, I then realised if I lifted the back of the wheel up, the section that was hitting the bonnet was actually dropping down quite a lot and I got it to the point where I only need to take 15mm out of 
this edge and bring it back 25 mil and have a little angle section there and the bonnet will close. Um, and that's really nothing out of such a big section and once I've plated it back over again and welded it all up it will be as strong as it ever was. So um, game on, time to make some more pretty sparks. Alright, there's the cutout. Uh, not a huge amount out and uh, now the wheel when sitting at an appropriate angle mm. will clear the bonnet. That's not the angle I have to sit up like that. We'll clear the bonnet nicely. Got a bit of a shock when I cut this box section open. There was a huge amount of water in there. Um, it didn't look real good, um, but luckily after I cleaned it all up, it's done very, very little damage. So um, I'll get some rust prevention stuff to spray in there. And I've also drilled a couple of little drain holes to help mitigate that issue in the future. Then uh, just made a simple little plate to fill that, that hole up, a couple of sides on it, it will just drop in there like that, get jammed in there like that, just drop in there like that, and uh, once that's all welded up, it should look very neat. Once again, the plans have been thrown into disarray by the changes in the rules. I'm now considering running the, uh, the wheels off the Alpha that the V6 came out of, which are a 17 by seven and a half, and they're a five stud wheel. So they're slightly wider again than the, than the 16s. Um, so I might need to carve a little bit more out of that, um, that rail. So I won't weld that up yet. Um, I think it's time to move on to the radiator. I don't think there's any rule changes that are gonna make me change the ra radiator. So I think we're pretty safe there. So onto the radiator, uh, not a huge amount of room to work with and a bit of an odd shape, but I turned to eBay and was pleasantly surprised to find Lancy Stratos aluminium radiators readily available and quite cheap. This radiator cost me about 130 bucks. Have a look at that fit. Uh, strangely enough, it was labelled as a Toyota MR2 radiator, but that was clearly an error because it's obviously built for this car. So the radiator is in. I uh, cut through that bottom rail, and when I did, I didn't realise how preloaded it was from these two side rails. And um, as the grinding just cut through the, the cross rail, the two side rails closed up and grabbed hold of the disc. Um, that's it there. Ripped the grinder out of my hand and uh, it copped me on the way through. But um, yeah, I'm usually pretty careful with stuff like that. Uh, missed it. Must have been a lack of safety beers. Anyway, I've mopped up the blood and the radiator sits in there really nicely now. Uh, when I measured it, I was correct that there was enough room, but I neglected to consider opening and closing the bonnet. And this grill aperture is sunken into the bonnet, and uh, so it was losing another 15mm and was clipping the top of the radiator on the right way through, which made life a bit difficult. But everything's in. Bonnet it open and closes nicely. So time to start thinking about mounting it. So the current plan, although it'll probably change in the next five minutes, is to use these factory brackets. Uh, although I might need to realign them because they've been welded on the piss hardcore. Anyway, use those. Probably run some uh, just rubber radiator hose as a rubber isolator. And then for the car side, got a bit of this tube, cut it to length, cut it down the centre line, so I'm left with a sort of half moon semicircle channel, and then weld that between the ends of the two chassis legs. And then the radiator should sit down in that channel. Should also uh, give the radiator a little little bit of protection from the uh, road and blue tongue lizards. So over to the uh, bandsaw. 
So to give me half a chance of getting this cut straight, I've uh, welded the tube to a bit of angle to stop the tube rotating and then clamped up a bit of a rudimentary fence on the bandsaw. Uh, see how we go. Got a nice straight cut, probably a fair bit straighter if I'd uh, used the angle grinder and a lot quieter and less messy. Love that bandsaw. Next thing I spent a little bit of time reshaping these radiator mounts. Uh, got a couple of little rubber spaces there and now the tube fits in there quite nicely. Probably better if it was centered, but you get the idea. So now I'm going to fire up the welder, flick it to AC, and weld these little these little half tubes, and finish off these brackets. But uh, aluminium welding can get fairly dangerous, so um, top of here. So the aluminium welding went very well. I think the material selection for this radiator was chosen on its welding properties. So that's excellent news. I've also tacked in the half tube and made a couple of little uh, clearance uh, pockets for the inlet and outlet of the radiator. And it all sits in there quite neatly. Now, Now I've changed my mind about 487 times about how to mount the top of the radiator and I think I've finally settled on just welding some little brackets off the, weld, off the uh, radiator with some rubber isolators bolted to these side panels. Uh, I don't have those rubber isolators so I don't want to make the brackets up yet until I've got them. Um, so I might move back to the Bare wheel well hole. Okay, back to the spare wheel. So the original idea was to just cap this off and then re-fiberglass this sort of shape back in to fill the hole. Having a look at it, I think I might go a different way for a couple of reasons. The first is that I've realised that there's another sort of chassis rail that runs underneath here. And if I connect the two with some nice formed sheet metal I can create a really strong box section and add some serious rigidity in this area without adding much extra weight at all. Now the benefit to that is with that extra rigidity I may be able to cut a little bit more out of this box section to drop the wheel down a little bit further and then possibly even get a 17 inch uh, wheel with a 22540 tyre on it, which is a way we might want to go later on. The other reason I thought I'd go this way is I'm terrible at fiberglassing and I'd prefer to use the angle grinder and the welder. Whilst you can angle grind fiberglass, I've yet to find any good quality fiberglass filler rods. So I think the first thing to do is cut out a little bit more fiberglass out of here to get back to this rail and similar situation on this side and then get the cardboard out and make start making up some templates to create that sealed up box section. So uh, I'll go and get the Dremel and the vacuum cleaner. So once again, a fair bit of cleanup, a little bit more metal and fiberglass removal, but I think we've turned a corner and it's time to start making some panels. So there's template number one sitting in place. Just threw the spare back in, very happy with the fit. So uh, 
to the workshop. So mark out time. I've got the template upside down so when I mark the fold line on that return lip I've actually got a chance of folding it in the right direction. Uh, this little cutout here is for a little bracket that the original accelerator pedal swung from. Uh, I may use that in the future, so I'm going to leave that there. Um, so, the trusty text are out. Mark some On this edge, I'm going to try and roll, using the bead roller, roll an edge around this contour. So I want to cut off uh, enough material to allow me to do that. So I'm going to use the washer trick to give me a nice offset line of this curve. And then we'll mark the actual fold line in. Alright, unfortunately this part is a bit big for my bandsaw, so back to the trusty angle grinder. One panel cut out, so order of operations, looks like I've got enough clearance between this bend and the bead roller to uh, put this bend in first um, and hopefully that adds a little bit of rigidity and reduces the warpage when it gets assaulted by the bead roller. Check that we're on the right side, move it to the right line. Starting to look like a panel. Alright, um, let's waste all this work by putting it in the B roller. And what I really want here is, I think, I think they call it a rolling over die, um, but all I've got is this step die. So I'm going to roll the step all the way around and then come back and angle grind off the step that I don't need because all I want is a, is a 90 degree bend. So there we go. Ooh, make sure we roll it the right way. I want to go that way. So there is our rolled panel. Uh, it's a bit distorted, a uh, little bit wonky. I really need some more practice on that bead roller. But uh, I'm going to cut this edge off. And with that off, I think I'll be able to tune it up a little bit with a hammer and dolly and straighten it all out. And uh, I think we can work with it. So I've managed to coax it into a shape I'm reasonably happy with. Got it. Uh, Got the bend nearly 90 degrees uh, and reasonably smooth. So the last job is to put this small bend in this side. The panel has to curve or well, fold down a little bit. Uh, just chopped a couple of little sneaky relief grooves out of the return lip and it looks like I can sneak it into the bender all in one go. So uh, to the bender. Okay, so just we want a, a small little tweak. Good 
Give it a try. In she goes. Only required a few very small tweaks and it, the fit is very nice. So very happy with that. Next thing to do is to create a panel to drop vertically straight down here. Uh, not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. I started making the cardboard template for the vertical drop section but then realised it's probably quicker and easier just to go straight to steel. So I've cut out a strip that's high enough and longer than I need and the first thing I need to do is put a nice big curve into it to follow that uh, outline of the wheel. Don't have a, uh, a roller so uh, I'm using this technique of just getting a big bit of tube, clamping it to the bench on a couple of spaces so that you can slide the, uh, the piece back and forward um, and I'll uh, start putting a nice big curve in it. I've marked the centre line of where I want the curve and that's the, the ends of the curve and these are just to help me keep everything square. So uh, start doing some bends. So that's worked really nicely, got a nice smooth bend in, in the, uh, the panel, uh, follows the contour nicely. So now I've marked where the return bends start, I'll use that to work out the length I need, chop these ends off and use a similar method to uh, bend, bend it back the other way. So I've cut the profile in the vertical section, got it all clamped into place. Uh, I'm going to tack it in a couple of spots and then go and check it. And if all goes well, weld the thing up. So I'm calling this panel finished for now. Uh, made up this bottom plate, much the same way as the top one with a rolled over edge on the bead roller and then welded it into place. I should have mentioned that the reason I went to all the trouble of like folding this edge over and then rolling a bead in this top panel and then again in the bottom panel was all about trying to stop this relatively large panel from distorting when I was welding it. Um, I mean you could definitely have just cut this panel out, cut this panel out, lined the edge up and, and tacked it, but uh, you'd end up with the whole thing warping a fair bit. Um, a fold or an edge is a really good way of keeping everything straight and it gives it a fair bit of extra strength as well. Anyway, that's done. It all still fits, which is a bonus. I'm not going to weld it in now because it's uh, giving me some really good access to the steering column and also when I fit the pedal box and stuff like that. So I'll leave that till later. I've capped over the hole, uh, that clearance hole. We cut into that um, chassis brace for the uh, the tyre, that's come up nicely, and I've just capped this bottom radiator support, added a few speed holes for style points, uh, so I'm calling that done for episode 2, thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>